Alright, good day class. Uh, once again, Belo Adewale is my name. And uh, the course we are going to be introducing ourselves to today is uh, Boss 220, Industrial Psychology. And uh, this course is meant for students at the 200 level in the Department of Business Administration, Faculty of Management Sciences. Now, what is the overview of this course? Basically, this course is going to provide some level of uh, introduction, some level of uh, orientation into what psychology and industrial psychology is and the application of psychology in the industrial world. So basically is looking at uh, uh, a scientific discipline which studies human behavior in the industrial uh, perspective. Furthermore, it is clear that organizational psychologists over the years have, uh, have, have managed and hired and you know support employees and also retrench employees over the years based on uh, the proponents or the concepts or the practice of psychologists or, or industrial psychology. So the essence of this course basically is to introduce us to various areas of industrial psychology, various concepts of industrial psychology, just such as learning, such as training, such as criteria and criterion, such as management of stress, such as understanding what industrial psychology is, understanding the attitude and perspective of different individuals that work in an organization. So for instance, in, in an organization, it is, it is clear that you know, a manager is, is, is uh, open. A manager is, uh, is, uh, is uh, open to various people from different backgrounds, from different uh, religious backgrounds, from different cultural backgrounds, from different experiences in life and you know you have the, these different people working on that one manager so the essence of this is the essence of industrial psychology is the ability is to ensure is to equip managers of different understanding understanding of the differences in different background on different cultural beliefs in different understandings of life and perspectives of life in an attempt to un ensure that we uh, that we achieve organizational performance or improve organizational uh, productivity and you know employee engagement so in this course students will be encouraged to analyze and think critically and as well as apply some of these introduced concepts and tools so what are the outcomes of expected from this course you know certainly as you have said industrial psychology is the essence of this course is to ensure that students have some level of insight into the scope of industrial psychology within the context of uh, of this level and also understand the various development of industrial psychology over the years and as well as the scope and also the meaning and the components of attitude and human engineering as well as change in an organization when we say human engineering we are, we are looking at a way of ensuring of application of science application of engineering into the human behavior in the industrial sector so furthermore we are going to be looking at you know learning and development you know definition understanding what is learning understanding what is development in an organization understanding the various theories of you know uh industrial psychology as it relates to learning as it relates to criterion as it relates to you know attitude and also personality also we are going to be looking at you know classical and conditioning and operate conditioning conditioning of learning development process so these are various uh concepts and theories that have been developed in an attempt to manage human behavior in an attempt to manage you know the outcomes that are expected from women especially when we say the conditioning uh, the classical conditioning and the operant conditioning condition of learning and development process furthermore we are, this course is going to expose us to what we know as uh, organizational stress when we say organizational stress the stress that people face internally on the job externally and how it affects their job and also what can we do as managers to manage this stress to help employees cope with this stress to work in an in, in an attempt to achieve organizational goals and organizational objectives so these are these are going to be the learning outcomes of this course so by the end of this course students are expected to understand clearly what is the scope of industrial psychology what is learning what is uh, personality what is stress and also what is uh, criterion as the case may be so what are the constants of this course this course will be certainly uh, uh subdivided into about uh, about six uh contents the the first content is going to be looking at uh, uh the introduction so introduction is going to be taking us through what is the meaning of industrial psychology what does industrial psychology mean as you have said earlier industrial psychology is the application of psychology in, in the industrial sector the application of psychology 
psychology, uh, what is it called? Uh, perspective, psychology uh, concepts, psychology uh, orientation in management of what is happening within the industry. So these are the meanings. This is what we mean by the meaning of industrial psychology. We are going to be exposing ourselves to these various meanings, these various understandings from, you know, different scholars. Then we are going to be looking at the concept of industrial psychology. What are the various concepts that we need to get familiar with within the industrial psychology scope, such as stress management, such as learning, such as uh, uh, management of people, such as motivation of people, such as job description, such as just job analysis, such as training and development. And also, how do we apply this within the industrial sector? So this is what the concept is going to be looking at. It's going to be looking at the various applications because certainly it will be difficult for us to apply industrial psychology or, or psychology rather in the industrial sector or in industrial world without necessarily understanding what is the concept of psychology itself. So concept of industrial psychology now is now bringing in the amalgamation or the application of industry, uh, of psychology rather, in the industrial world or in the, uh, uh, in, the in, in the various industry where organizations find themselves. So what is the scope of industrial psychology will also be identified here. Scope means that what is the extent of the understanding, of course, at this level. What is the extent of the scope? What is the extent of how broad is industrial psychology? What and what does industrial psychology cover? This is what we mean by the scope of industrial psychology. And this is what we are going to be looking at under this phase. So furthermore, we are going to be looking at the various problems that happen in industrial psychology, both the problems that the industrial psychology is hard to face and also the problems that also are kind of uh, constraining for management where industrial psychology is to help resolve and also the ones that are also embedded within the industrial psychology as the case may be. Furthermore, we are going to be looking at criterion. When we mean criterion, criterion basically is the standard for evaluation of a job. How well is a job done? How do we define success? What is success? You know, uh, for, for instance, it is clear that success means different things to different people. So this is criterion. Criterion is looking at how do we how do we define how do we define success how do we say a job is well done how do we say uh, uh, profit is maximized how do we say profit is assured how do we say sales is also uh, uh, at its optimal level how do we say for instance uh, performance of employee are at the best so criterion is like the standard that is helping us understand that a job is well done so if a job is to be well done Within the industrial psychology perspective, it is ideal that we set criterion. Criterion is set for, 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 for people management and as well for theory as uh, we are going to be looking at in this module. Furthermore, we are going to be looking at the requirements for criteria. Before we can say a criteria has been set, what are the basic requirements that is must met before we can call it a criteria? So this is uh, another part of this module that we are going to be looking at. We are going to like the requirements for criteria. How do, what are the requirements? What are the basic things that criteria must be met? Or what are the basic things that criteria must met before we call it criteria? So these are the various requirements. Furthermore, we are going to be looking at the characteristics of criterion. What does it entail? What, before we can say this is criterion, what are the various characteristics, the various features that we can see, that, be, be, that, 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 that can define the features, that can define the characteristics of criterion as the case may be. Furthermore, we are going to be looking at the steps to developing a criterion. Of course, this course is exposing both students and management for understanding how to develop standards. How do you develop, develop criterion? There are various steps that have been identified by different scholars. This study is going to be adopting about one or two of them to see the various steps that are usual and the various steps that are desired in developing a criterion that will seem acceptable, that will seem modest, that will seem understandable by everybody, every stakeholder within the industry. So furthermore, we are going to be looking at theory and criteria in industrial psychology. When we mean theory and criteria in industrial psychology, over the years, you know, we have seen different theories of human, uh, human behavior. You have seen the theory of, of need by Abraham Maslow. You have seen, you know, uh, the chain theory by Kurt Lewin. We have seen, uh, of, of course, uh, a couple of other theories that has been developed within the business and industrial sector that measures performance of people. So we want to see, if we want to see a theory and we want to apply it, whether it's the theory of science in psychology or is the theory of management in, in, in management or in business, 
and we want to apply it in industrial psychology how do we set a criteria to say this theory is actually applicable in this in this regard or how do we set a proxy to measure the theory within the human context so this is looking at you know the relationship between theory and also the criteria for those theory in the management of people in an industry or in the management of this perspective and psychology of people within an industrial sector so criterion is going to take us through the various definitions and concepts of what criterion means what are the requirements of criteria what are the various characteristics or the features of criterion the step in developing a criterion and also the theory and uh, criteria in the industrial psychology furthermore we are going to be looking at you know learning and development of course it is inevitable at this point that in industrial psychology we don't touch or we don't evaluate what is learning and development because learning is continuous learning even though learning might mean different things to different people but learning is what we do on a daily basis learning is what is expected to be done in academic settings in industrial setting in the scientific management in manufacturing in industry so learning is important so in view of this we want to see learning and the concept of learning within the industrial psychology perspective within the scope within the view of industrial psychology we want to understand what is learning and then we want to see what are the various theoretical processes of learning you know theoretical processes of learning is looking at what are the various things that we put in place in an attempt to ensure that an employee learns something so one of the major uh, uh, perspective uh, theories here that we are looking at is the behaviorist theory when we say the behaviorist theories the behaviorist theories looked at the classical conditioning and the operant conditioning as you have stated earlier when you say classical conditioning it is looking at a way of ensuring it's like a stick and carrot method we want to ensure that you know when certain behavior or when certain uh, triggers have been set then people react why the operant conditioning is looking at we are going to give you a particular reward but the reward will not be gotten up until uh, 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 up until you have actually done certain work in place. So basically, the classical conditioning and the operant conditioning is what we are going to be paying more attention to at this level of this work. Of course, we might pay attention a little to cognitive theories, you know, social learning theories, and as well, we are going to be looking basically at the principles of learning. What are the various principles of learning? When we say principles of learning, principle of learning is looking at uh, uh, the various, uh, uh, the various perspective that are embedded that we must see that guides learning per se the various areas of learning that it is important or that is usual for management and for organization uh, in the industrial sector furthermore we are going to be looking at the conditions for learning development process if you say condition for learning development process like the criteria of learning development that has been set that has been jointly agreed by you know various scholars so when we say condition for learning development process we are looking at what are the various uh, uh, requirement that must be met before we can say there's development process in learning module four is looking at the meaning and concept of personality so when we say personality personality is like an attitude is like uh, 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 a behavior a set of behavior a set of way of life that an organ or that an individual has taken over a period of time that has portrayed over a period of time so we are going to be looking at personality because managers are going to be exposed to different personality in an organization they are going to be exposed to people that are muslims to people that are christians to people that are uh, uh, traditionalists you are going to be also be exposed to people that are from different backgrounds that are from the rich house that are from the rich homes that are from the you know the the the, the, the modest homes or uh, per se or let, let me say the humble homes as the case may be so the, the, the concept of personality or the personality trait, it is important that we evaluate this within the view or within the scope of industrial psychology. When we say personality trait, we are looking at, for instance, somebody who has different kind of uh, uh, academic degree from the other person. Somebody who actually the need is at the basic level and the other need is at the self-esteem level. How do you now mitigate between the two of them in terms of personality within the organizational sector? within the industrial world so in view of this this particular module is going to be letting us understand the various personality that exist within an organization and how better is is uh, how, how, how well can an organization can an, can a manager of an organization manage these various persons furthermore we are going to be looking at the determinants of personality so personality as we said is a kind of character 
characteristics of an individual over a period of time. So, what are the determinants? What makes somebody behave in some kind of way? What makes somebody have some kind of personality over a period of time? Then we are going to be looking at issues like heredity. When we say heredity, it is what is being transferred you know, from parents to their offerings, from families to their offerings, and, the, uh, and so on and so forth. So, we want to look at how heredity is a determinant of personality. We want to look at our culture, the cultural background of people, the people who are from the northwest, the people who are from the south, the people who are from the east, how what how as culture molded their personality. Personality in terms of how they behave, how they react to things, how they want their results to be achieved, you know, how, how also they want to manage people. How as culture molded that? We want to look at their family background. How as family background, the the the, the social economic uh, uh, background, the social economic status of their family. The heritage of their family, how does it affect their personality and how can that be uh, applied within the industrial world or within the industrial sector? This is also another concept in industrial psychology. That experiences in life, of course, that life is a learning process as, as we all know. So when we say experiences in life, we want to see our experience in life has also been a determinant of personality. We want to see the people we interact with on a daily basis. It is clear. Over the years, people have said that you resemble the people that you assemble with. So... Basically, the people that we interact with is also a, a determinant of our personality. And managers in organizations must understand that within the industrial sector, within, the, within an organized setting of business, it is clear that people will portray different personality. And this, pattern, this personality, there are various uh, determinants of it. And how do we manage these different sets of people? As you have said earlier, personality factors and behavior at work. There are different kinds of people within the organizational sector, as you have said, within the organizational settings. So, personality factors also differs among people within an organization. So, as different as it is, some people are introverts, some people are extroverts, some people are demo, uh, de de democratic, some people are autocratic. So, in view of that, there are different personality factors that is exposed to one particular manager. So, for instance, a manager is expected to manage somebody who comes from a Jigunle, Another person who has come from Lekki, another person who has come from uh, uh, Southern Kaduna, another person who has come from Boronu, another person who has come from uh, uh, Cross River State and, you know, Enugu and uh, Akwa Ibom. Under one manager. So, a manager is now expected to manage the personality of these different people in an attempt to achieve organizational goals and objectives. In an attempt to ensure that there's efficiency and there's effectiveness within the organization. Of course, you are going to be looking at some theories of personality uh under this model as well so furthermore we are going to be looking at attitude how do we define attitude what is diff what are the diff major difference between attitude and also personality we are going to be looking at that within the context of uh of this of this study and the essence of this is to ensure that attitudes are managed attitude are controlled in an attempt to ensure because you know the essence of industrial psychology basically is to ensure that psychology and scientific methods are used to to uh to achieve results in the industrial sector are applied to achieve results with human behavior so we want to look at how do we modify people's attitude but in modification of attitude you need to understand what are those attitude what are the various components of this attitude and how this attitude are formed and then we begin to look at the theories that can help us in managing those attitudes in improving those attitudes in an attempt to achieve both individual and organizational goals. So under this model, we are going to be looking at the definition of attitude. We are going to be looking at the components and you know the types of attitude from their comp cognitive components, from their affective components, of course, from their behavioral comp components. And as well, we are going to be looking at you know attitude formation. How do people form attitude? What are the determinants of you know this attitude? This, you have this kind of attitude. How was it formed? How was it built? Then how can it be modified? Then how can we form another one? How can we learn? How can we relearn? How can we unlearn a particular attitude? This will also certainly be uh, evaluated uh, uh, under this module. Furthermore, we are going to be looking at the cognitive dissonance theory, which also uh, is looking at uh, you know attitude from a cognitive uh, perspective. Don't forget, we are using psychologic concept, psychology concept from psychology and science in the application of industrial work. In the application of human behavior so these are the reasons why we are going to be seeing issues like the cognitive dissonance which are theories in psychology and how can we apply that in the management of people in an industrial or an organized industrial 
setting stress and stress management of course people are subjected to different kind of stress it, it could be physical it could be mental it could be emotional you know it could be physiological it could be psychological and all of these people usually are also within the organizational settings of course people also would have some kind of uh, uh, stress that we call financial stress of course in in this kind of uh, period in this kind of era people are exposed to different kind of stress both on the job and off the job so in industrial psychology it is ideal that we understand what stress is we identify what is stress and what kind of stress are employees within an organizational setting are exposed to so we need to firstly understand what is the meaning and the definition of stress both internally and externally as it relates to to our job and then we begin to look at the approaches to to stress what are the various approach what are the various understanding of stress and that is going to take us to what we call the homostatic and the medical approach we are going to be looking at the cognitive appraisal approach we are going to be looking at the person environment fit approach like certainly person environment fit is looking at the environment both internal and external that an employee is being you know has found itself to, to work what is the fitness there and how has it created some level of stress for the for the employee is it mental is it emotional is it semantic so these are the issues that we are going to be looking at of course we are going to be looking at the psychoanalytic approach which is also another uh, another concept from psychology which we are trying to apply to human behavior in the industrial sector so furthermore we are going to be looking at the causes and the consequences of work related stress so when employees are stressed in an organizational settings in the industrial world what are the consequences on the job what are the consequences on the employees what are the consequences on management and also we want to know what are the causes and how can we mitigate those causes so basically in management the essence of identifying problems is to resolve them so we are looking at the causes and the consequences of work related stress and also in an attempt to ensure that we provide some level of uh, solutions to it Furthermore, we are going to be looking at the internal stimulus of, for stress. We are going to be looking at the environmental stressors. When we mean environmental stressors, environmental stressors is looking at the environment where an employee has found itself, the environment where the organization is situated, both internally and externally. So, this environment, how have they been, how have they uh, contributed to stressing the employees? And how can it be managed? Some are actually with, within, within the control of the employees, while some are actually entirely outside the control of such employee then we now begin to look at stress management when we say stress management the essence of identifying stress as part of the scope of this work is to understand how to manage the stress in an attempt to ensure that we achieve efficiency we achieve effectiveness and we achieve organizational goals and an objective while also the employees are taking you know in in in, in some scientific parlance People believe that you can use employees, get your results, and that's okay. But at this level, because of we are looking at you know the psychological effect of that within the industrial sector, we want to ensure that we achieve our results while our staffs are also not overstretched, while they are also not overworked. So that's why we are looking at stress management, both at the individual level and also at the organizational level, in an attempt to ensure that there's a mutual exchange, there's a mutual benefit between both the uh, 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 employee and also the organization and also there's uh, mutual results achievement employees achieve their results their objectives or their goals individually and also the organization in turn achieve their also their goals uh, 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 at a more uh, uh, component or composite level so what are the managerial implication of st of stress this is also going to be looking at you know what are the implication of st stress to management what are the implication of stress to uh, uh, organizational uh, uh, goals and objectives achievement in an organization so this is what uh, this this particular area is, is going to be looking at so for the purpose of this course students are going to be uh, exposed to number one as we said earlier to the scope of industrial psychology to the concept of industrial psychology and also the various problems that are posed to to, to various industry which is also within the purview of industrial psychology secondly we are going to be looking at criterion and uh, how do we define results how do we uh, how do we define that a job is well done and also how do we develop those criteria and also what are the various uh, understanding of this criteria within the industrial sector using the psychological uh, perspective of it then furthermore we are going to be looking at learning and development what is learning what are the various concepts of learning what are the various theories of learning 
also what are the various principles of learning and also what are the conditions for learning the uh, development process you are going to be looking of course personality as you have said personality traits and their determinants you are going to be looking at the factors and you know behavior at work and also the theories of personality as the case may be you are going to be looking at attitude and lastly you are going to be looking at uh, stress management so at the end of this course we expect that students must have been able to understand what are the uh, various definition of industrial psychology and why is the need for the study of industrial psychology and as well what is the scope of industrial psychology at this level within the context of an organizational uh, management we are going to be looking at uh, students are expected to have understood clearly what is criterion what is learning and development what is personality what are the various personality within an organization settings and how do we manage them and also attitude and as well stress and stress management and as well as the managerial implication of stress on uh, any organization as the case may be so this is bringing us to the end of our, our introductory class so in the next class you are going to be looking at the first module which is going to take us through uh, what we understand as you know uh, the introduction to industrial psychology thank you